Life for Johnny can be crazy. You never know who will go next. Until then, I drive, watch the city lights, lay the foot down, and just cruise. Hey there, everyone. Uh, you're watching Riot Press Productions. My name is Patrick Thomas Perno. I'm a comic book illustrator, a college instructor, and also the co-creator of Giant Phantasm. Uh, that will probably be the last time that we're playing that video. I'm sure everyone's very excited about that. <laughs> um, uh, you know, every Sunday uh, I do this show, Cold Set Down Sunday, where we just kind of talk about comic books and video games and toys and crowdfunding and so forth. Um, and I usually have my good buddy here, Dr. Andrea. Doctor, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. It seems like we don't do these that often anymore. Well, I mean, uh, you put a lot of work into the, the uh, campaign, so you certainly deserved a week off. <laughs> it seemed like a month off. It, it was very strange uh, not streaming, it, although I did still stream even though I was away. Um, but uh, it, it was very weird being away from my, my, my work area. Um, let's go ahead and bring in our other teammate, Blake. How you doing, Blake? I'm fine. Happy Sunday, everybody. How y'all? Ha happy Thanks. Sunday. What's it? What's your icon today? What is that? It's supposed to be a zombie. So if you don't know by looking at it, then I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just it looks like. I mean, uh, it looks very like a, like a. I mean, I know it's your character, but it looks very mm -hmm. specific. Um, yeah, this is this is Chomp zombie version. So I've right. got a lot of zombie stuff this week. How is uh how is your week going, Blake? Uh, week has been very busy on a non-splintering side. Um, I won't go into too many details of that, but it's been a very crazy week. Hmm. Uh, we did just get back from pumpkin hunting. Oh yeah, so that was fun. Took the kids to do that sort of thing. So that I'm was, actually that, surprised I was able to jump in on this on time. That was actually me last Saturday, like to a T. Up, I, I might have been the same place you were at. <laughs> I, I doubt that. It doesn't seem like you were actually that close to where I was. Yeah, I know. That's so, why I didn't hook up because I was like, I, I, I put it in your address and I was like, oh, man, like, that's, a, that's yeah, a drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were closer than usual, but not that close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, for, for everyone that's watching, uh, Rick, George, Zeroy, what about Dan, VIP, uh, you know, the usual suspects? Uh, thanks for being here. If you guys would, uh, Give us a thumbs up, and if you get a chance, uh, you know, tweet this out, and let's, let's get some more people in here. Um, hopefully, it's going to be a pretty historic day because we're, you know, this is going to be the last, uh, the last Sunday, like before we close the Johnny Fantasm 1985 campaign, um, which is something that we're talking about, and, it, and it's also my birthday. Uh, I, I think you guys saw the birthday cake. That was a a lovely cake uh, brought to you by Mrs. Parnell. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up a picture of it for for people that didn't see it yet. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, yeah, I, I was I took a nap last night uh, after going out to get all you can eat sushi, and after completely stuffing myself, I, I took a, a little short nap, and I and I woke up to uh, to this gem. Nice. Yeah, it was a nice little present. It's 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 actually it's been a, like a really great birthday month for me. I, I like I've gotten more toys than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> I know it's I know it's funny for someone that's over the hill saying that, but uh, it's been pretty brutal. So um, your hunt up here was successful, is that correct? Oh man, too successful. Like there's a new toy store up there, and I was telling you about it, but it's called uh, Eternia Dreams, 
And um, they, like they're only open uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And we were up there early and I and I hit the guy up and I was like, hey, you know, like I'm a big fan. I follow you on Facebook. I'm a comic book artist. And he was like, yeah, just come on by. He like opened up the store like just for us to come in. Huh. Um, and it was it was amazing. Like the wife gave me a couple hundred bucks just to kind of buy like whatever I wanted. Uh, and um, it was it was money well spent. And then you know I did the auction over an Ethan show and it had some success and sold a couple of pieces. So then I went back <laughs> on like Saturday again, like uh, before we before we went um, pumpkin hunting. I, I went I went back again, um, really splurged. I um, I got a uh, you know actually I got this guy right here. I'll just show you real quick. I'm gonna show you everything I got, but I got this this piece from. Uh, let me make myself big. Jesus. Um, I got this this little, I'm sure Leroy will appreciate this, uh, but it's like Filmation Beastman. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like there's something about orange plastic that I just adore, and the plastic is really good on this. Um, and then I also got, I got a, a couple of Thundercats characters uh, from the same type of line. And then I also got like Thundercats characters from the 2011 cartoon. Um, they were like really reasonable price and I literally bought like all of them. Like <laughs> the, the Thundercats, uh, cartoon series, <laughs> yeah, times a thousand, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> the, the 2011, uh, Thundercats cartoon, like people weren't like, very into, so I guess the toys don't go for a whole lot, but I actually enjoyed the cartoon. I thought, I thought it was done pretty well. Um, and I, I was able to pick up like the whole line for like less than a hundred bucks. So, uh, I, I went ahead and did it. And then I and then I got some more stuff. I ordered some stuff in the in the mail, and I got I got a toy box here. That I'm, I'm gonna open up on, on live as well on TV, live on TV. Um, and so yeah, what what's on my agenda? Like, what do we want to talk about? Okay, well, I guess the big news is, you know, uh, Johnny Phantasm hit 30k over the night, which I appreciate. Um, and wow. yeah, thank you. Um, now, for, for some people, that's not a lot. You know, for some people, like they make that in a night. Uh, for me, I feel like that's that we're doing pretty well. You know, it's, it's double what we did last time, it's triple what we did the first time. Um, and just as long as we keep on gaining more people and you know, getting more people on the Johnny Phantasm fan, as soon as we get to 2001, it's going to be very interesting how many people like we have uh, hanging out. Um, so, you know, slow and steady wins the race. Um, I know some people can make a splash. Um, and we're kind of in there for the long haul. So uh, I'm, I think everyone that, that has jumped on, keep on telling your friends about it. Um, the name of the next one is going to be called Johnny Phantasm Extreme 93. Um, and I have someone very fun doing the cover already lined up. Uh, everyone knows him. I'm not going to say who it is, but everyone knows him. Everyone loves him. Um, and it's going to be super extreme, the, the, the cover. Um, but what's interesting is that campaign is not going to be launching to March. We have the toy campaign, the pre-launch we're going to be putting up actually a week from today on this show um, for the toy, and we and we got some uh, we got some uh, some pictures to show and so forth. Um, but uh, no, well, it, it might be Friday. It might not be Friday. I don't know. We'll have to see. What whoever it is, they have to draw them on a skateboard and with a ponytail. Uh, no, that's not happening. Uh, which one? <laughs> Both? <laughs> yeah. Well, did, did you see the, did you see the Kelsey Shannon piece that he did of Johnny Phantasm on the skateboard? I don't know if I did. So he, he, he did that and he sold it on the auction and we're actually going to be using that for a, a poster. Okay. Um, yeah, I did see that on the, the first night of the auction. I it was that first yeah, night. Johnny Phantasm was doing like an Ollie. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I, I'm excited. Like Kelsey's wrapping that up right now. He's going to have that over to me soon. Um, but yeah, like, so, so, so the toy thing is going to be happening. I got some pictures that I want to show for that. Some, some updated stuff, but then also we have, I guess we're calling it project Superman. Um, there's a project that we're going to be doing in between the toy and in between March. Um, it's something that is already drawn. Uh, it's kind of new. Uh, I, I drew it for IDW, um, about, a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, right before Comic Skate, um, but yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of taking a little, a little something from John Malin here. How he's got Project Thunder, I got Project Superman. 
so yeah, there's going to be a new project uh, coming out and um, also have, uh, you know, someone amazing doing the cover for that as well. Uh, so, so that's going to be, a, it's kind of a secret. I, I, I don't want to launch it until I have the cover done until I have some more stuff done or the, like the sign up at least. Um, but it's going to be, it's going to be great. And wh what's fun about it is there, there's not a whole lot of superhero comic books in comic skate. Um, so hopefully, uh, this will be a, uh, you know, a fun project that everyone can get into. Um, the cover artist is amazing. Um, and I mean, it's just, it's a project that I've been like, literally I've had my hands in since I graduated the Hubert school. So since like 2004, I've been kind of dabbling with this project off and on. People have been interested in it here and there. IDW is interested in it. Um, the person who I did it for, IDW, got canned. Uh, so now it's kind of just a limbo. Um, I have some some tweaks that I want to make to it, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna be kind of talking more about that as we get closer. But again, like like the first campaign that, like that we're doing after eighty five is a toy campaign, so we're gonna be pushing that a lot. Yeah, did someone say Hubert? I did. Um. So yeah, let's just go ahead and take a minute and peruse the campaign real quick, and you know, do the, oh, do the thing that we do, where we kind of push, push our 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 product on, on people. But just you know, for anyone that's, that that hasn't jumped on board yet, which I'm I'm almost positive everyone in this room and chat has, has already gotten this. But you know, if you haven't, and if you're thinking about it, now's the time. Because we only have one week left on Johnny Phantasm 1985, 48-page oversized comic book. Uh, Devil's Night in New Detroit, 1985. The city burns as Johnny faces a threat more evil than, than himself. And that's the interesting thing about Johnny. Like, Johnny is a bad guy. And here we see a bad guy kind of dealing with a problem that even he sees as is pretty awful. Um, just to kind of put things in perspective of, of what's happening in, in, in New Detroit. Um, so, uh, the campaign now has the Michael Golden cover that we see right here. Uh, classic, uh, comic book artist. Actually, I, I have a new cover, a new version of the cover that I can share here in a second. Uh, I kind of messed with some of the, the dress because when I got the cover, I was on vacation. So all I had was my iPad with me. So I didn't have, I wasn't able to kind of really get into it. Um, but I kind of laid the cover out a little bit different. I'll show everyone here in a second, but the exciting news is I haven't had a chance to update it, but. Even if you back it at the smallest level at $25, you get uh, a trading card set. Um, now you get four poker chips in total. Um, and you get a poster by Kelsey Shannon. Um, so you, you get a lot of stuff just for $25. Um, if you want to go higher than that, if you want to go the, the $50 tier, you get the trading cards and you also get the, the Cecil uh, trading card. Um, you get the Michael Golden poker chip. Uh, you get all new stickers, all new postcards, um, a whole new overhaul. Um, but you know, if you if you missed out, and if you if you you know if you're new to the party here, uh, and you want to kind of get some of the old stuff, not the old stuff, but the stuff that was available the first half of the campaign. Uh, here here is this stuff right here. You get my cover. Um, you get the pin set. You get this sticker. You get these postcards. And you get a whole different sticker pack. Um, so if you want to get everything, which I call the subscription, uh, you get Johnny Phantasm 1977. That's the book that we did before this. And then you get the Michael Golden and my cover. You get everything for 135. So we got stuff at a small tier. We have stuff in between and then, you know, uh, all, all the other good stuff again, printed with, with Peter over there at Alterna comics, um, using the printing partnership program. We're very excited to be working with him again. People love the quality of the paper. Um, classic feeling, uh, and a very, you know, like what we're doing with this, this thing, 1985 is we're, we're trying to make it like a period piece. We're trying to make it interactive. So, you know, the idea that 1977 and also 1985 are, are printed on this newsprint, it's supposed to, it's supposed to feel like that. It's supposed to feel like nostalgia. Um, but yeah, I so have a question about, uh, your campaign right now, because you've got the stretch goal for 35,000 is the next stretch goal, right? Yes. Yeah. Let's look at that. You've so the, you hit the thirty thousand and thirty five is the next one. That's going to be eight extra pages on in the book. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So, so what are those pages? Uh. Well, I mean, we have a couple things that we're toying with. Okay. Um. We we have e like either just extra content, like like we have loads of extra stuff that we could throw in, uh. Or um. We have a, a short story that we're working on about the Scarlet Heart, 
who was kind of like the the only good guy uh, in Detroit that we we hardly ever see. Um, but it's a it's a story. It's a Christmas story about him taking down a kind of Santa Claus elf gang. Uh, so so that's something that we're we'll be toying with. Um, I mean, I, I'd be excited if, if we get to 35. Uh, I'm not sure if, if, if we got enough in the gas tank to make it. <laughs> um, but but if we do make it, like we'll add we'll add those pages and we'll be talking about those next week. Um, but right now, I haven't changed this yet. But um, we've we've unlocked this thing, so everyone also gets the New Year's 1986 poker chip uh, with with this thing because this this book this doesn't happen in Halloween. It goes from Halloween to Christmas and then to New Year's. Um, so it kind of it, it kind of goes through all of the all, all the holidays through Yule, and kind of wrapping it up with 1986 here. Um, but yeah, so so hopefully, I mean, we can get to 35. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, of course, I want to, but you know, I, it's like if you if you look at the graph, it, you you can kind of see how things go. Now, if if, if we get some big plugs, then you know, like that could happen. But uh, it, like we've. We've kind of gone out this this campaign alone for the most part, you know. We, we've had a little bit of help here and there, but for the most part, like this has just been ourselves, which we're very proud of. Because um, that's that's what's important. You kind of have to be able to stand on your own feet. Uh, some people rely on, on other people to kind of do the work for them. Um, we're kind of a, a roots movement here, you know, um, getting people slowly. Uh, but I, I feel like the, you know, the the backers that we get are, are in it for the long haul. They're excited. Um, like, I feel like a slow burn is better than a flash in the pan. Um, so again, I think everyone that has, uh, backed this so far, um, if you're, if you're thinking about it, if you're on the fence, you know, let's go ahead and do that because we have about six, five days left on it. Um, Shane and I are, are going to be closing out the campaign on, uh, Friday night. So the, the, uh, the night of the 30th. Um, so at midnight, which will be Halloween midnight, the night of the 30th, we're going to be closing the campaign um probably midnight uh um pacific time so it'll be like three in the morning like when we turn it off uh for, for the eastern people but is here a cat yeah it's my cat i've always got this cat next to me during this thing uh -huh. but usually she's asleep but this today she is very much awake oh well if i learned anything about about streaming you gotta feed the cats before you go on <laughs> I, 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 that, that's what I was doing before I went on just stuffing their faces and getting them all set. So they're all taking naps now. Yeah. Um, but again, yeah. So, so, so pass this along to a friend. If you're thinking about it, now is the time and everyone that has backed it. I appreciate it. Everyone has backed it twice. You know, I know there's people that have backed it two or three times. I appreciate you guys very much. So um, back early, back often. What's that? Back early, back often. Yeah. That's, that's the mail saying, right? Maybe. I um, <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, that's what he says. He always says that. Uh, and then let's see. Look what else did I want to bring up? I have some things. Oh, well, well, well. Just for the sake of it, let me show. I have some artwork that I'm going to show off as well. Um, let's see. Got some more pages. Some new pages from uh, Giant Phantasm. Some people are have seen some of the stuff before, so some of it will be old news. Um, this this page is already colored. I think I might have showed off the colored version of this. Um, Andrea, uh, you know, hooked me up with a, a Italian, uh, gal who is a great colorist and she's working with us right now. What's her name again, Andrea? Her, her real name is Teresa. Uh, Teresa. Okay. That's right. Ray. Yeah. Well, yeah. What's her, what, what, what's her print name? Panta Ray. Panta Ray. That's right. Um, and she's great. She's, she's kind of, uh, I, I like, I, I, I suspect that she's kind of just starting out with the coloring thing, but she's really good. She's very good. Um, and uh, she's kind of doing some of the flats, and I'm kind of going over, putting some of the special effects over on top of her. Um, but so, so far, it's coming out pretty well. Um, probably next week, I'll have some more stuff, and we'll show off some of that stuff next week. But 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 here are some of the pages that, uh, you know, that me and Evan and Andrea worked on. Um just, just an opening scene. Like these are actually like the first couple pages with, uh, with Johnny Phantasm. And it's funny because, because Panda Ray asked me, she's like, why, why am I coloring pages one? And then I'm paging, I'm coloring pages like 28. <laughs> and, uh, I told her, I was like, I did the middle part of the book first because the middle part I thought looked most attractive to put on Indiegogo. Um, so she was kind of wondering why I was like sending her like pages one, two, and then pages 24. She was like, well, you know, what's in, what's going on in the middle? Um, so, 
you know, like uh, these are like the first the first couple pages of of the story. Just gonna fly through them real quick, just kind of get people a taste of what they're about. I actually like, Ooh. yeah, this one's fun. This is where we, yeah. we we start to see the the evil that's worse than Johnny, and and also a, a cult group that kind of worships it. And then here we get the, like this is after the scene that is on Indiegogo where the crowd goes after Johnny. This is where he kind of like retreats back to his his base. He's making himself a cocktail. Meanwhile, down below in the lobby, shit is starting to hit the fan. So he's got to kind of start deal with that. But this is this is a real fun page. I, I think this might be my favorite my my favorite two pages of the book so far. Um, and I, I like to thank Doctor for for helping me with this. Yeah, I like the broken the broken glass paired with that, the panel layout in the bottom right. Oh, I appreciate I that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Like Shane and I were talking about this last week, or I know actually last night, uh, where you know the Comicscape format is it's pretty much like 48 pages, you know, it's kind of like a thing. Everyone does 48 pages. Um, and it's, it's hard because 48 pages is like, it's larger than a regular comic book, but it's shorter than like a traditional graphic novel. So it's like you, you, you have a, a you have to cram in a lot of story in a small amount of space because you, you can't stretch it out for the long game and you kind of have to wrap it up. Um, so it's funny. So so right here, it's like on this page, on these two pages, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen panels. There's trying to make you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to use like like the real state to the like to my advantage. You know, just just use as much of it as I can. Um, a lot of little panels telling some stories, uh, but this is kind of. Because I mean, like one of the reasons why I do this is because I want to have a splash page here and there, you know, like but like before I have a splash page. So if that's the case, then I have to cram in a, a bunch of story in a short amount of time, which I actually enjoy. Um, I think it's kind of challenging. It's like a, it's like putting together like a puzzle. Um, Gestalt theory is is what uh, Alex Stevens used to call it at the Hubert School. I said it again, um, but it's a theory where it's like you can you can string everything together and every panel has some kind of design that kind of leads into the next panel. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm excited about this. Um, I think we're going to be sending this to the printers probably the end of November. And I think people will, will, will start getting these around Christmas time, which I think will be exciting. Um, and then, uh, we're we're actually going to be launching the just a little rewind there. We're actually going to be launching the toy campaign on Black Friday. So so that Friday after Thanksgiving, we're going to have the the toy campaign up and running. Um, and then uh, and then like I said, like end of uh, December, we should be shipping these out. Um, and then you know, I, I'm not sure the shipping schedule with the toys quite yet uh, because. Uh, you know, like we're still kind of figuring some of that stuff out, getting the toys from China and the packaging. So I, I can't really say about a shipping date for, for that, but you can put this on your calendar. Uh, January 24th is when we're going to be launching Project Superman. Um, so late January, we're going to be uh, putting up the new book. And then end of March is going to be Giant Phantasm Extreme 93. So something we're doing and it like this is what i is, you know something i contemplated when we were uh when when the wife and i were driving up to maryland in the back was i was just planning out the year in my head just trying to figure out how to keep things moving um everyone knows and i say in the beginning that i'm a comic book instructor or a college instructor um i'm actually going to be i'm quitting my job doing that i want to focus just on books and uh toy making i guess um and uh, you know, I find having that that day or two days a week uh, having to spend at school kind of really takes some of the gas out of me. Um, so uh, I'm going to be, you know, in, in December is going to be my last year of teaching after you know 11 years or so. I might go back to it, um, but I just I, I want to concentrate on this stuff. Uh, so I'll still be a teacher at heart. I mean, I I don't mind. You know, I might just take a year off and might get back to it. I don't know. We'll see. 
Um, but but I feel like yeah, it is. It, it is kind of like it's like a huge leap. Just just well, I mean the like the idea was like when I went to school. Um, was to always do comic books and that's it. And I kind of got roped into uh, teaching because, well, I, I had a couple of instructors at both the schools I went to that kind of intrigued me and I, and I liked it. You know, I, I liked the idea of doing demonstrations. Uh, but also for me, it was important to have that consistent paycheck um, and health insurance and, and so forth. Um, so that's why I kind of got involved with teaching is because I could always count on it. Um, and it is, yeah, it is scary a little bit, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, like, I, I forget what the saying is, and I'm going to get it wrong, but it's like, um, oh, hold on, what is it? Like, like anything worth anything, there's risk, you know, like, like if it's worth something, there's some type of risk. If, if, it, if it was easy, it like, it wouldn't be worth it. Um, so th there is some risk, but I, I think the, uh, like the, reward will be uh well worth it and i have faith and uh, again and I'm, I'm i'm confident uh and people out there like everyone has responded very well to johnny phantasm and i think we can keep it up and i think we can offer new things more books you know riot press is gonna be making more more books and toys um and i mean and and like this is really going forward there but after uh giant phantasm extreme 93 we're going to be doing another toy we're going to be using the same mold but we're, we're going to be doing radical colors like really vibrant uh hot pink hot green type of versions of giant phantasm so we're going to be making toys here on out and then eventually making a a six inch toy hopefully within a year or so that to, to go with like legend black series type type style figures um but anyway uh, so here's some of the new pages for the Johnny Phantasm. Um, let's see. How do I stop this? How many of these pages are still available to purchase on the campaign? Um, well, we have uh, some pages from uh, 85 up, maybe maybe four or five. And we still have probably about 15 of the uh, Johnny Phantasm 1977 pages still up. So... There, if you're looking for art, there, there's plenty of art still up on the page. And not that I like to toot my own horn, but I, I feel like our prices are the best. Um, I think I only, I'm only charging 125 for a page. Uh, and one of the reasons why I do that is because I have a drawer full of pages here. You know, I want people to enjoy these and, and hang them up. I, I don't want to hoard these forever. Um, I'm excited. I just, here, I'll show you this. I, uh, on, on, uh, EVS's show, uh, the, night, the, the auction, I sold this piece. This was my, uh, my Ninja Trolls cover. Um, mm -hmm. I'm ship, I'm shipping this right now and getting this out. And again, it's been sitting in my drawer, you know, uh, I'm, I'm happy that this is going to go, uh, into someone's collection. Hopefully someone that is a big turtles fan. Um, but yeah, I'm shipping this out right now. And again, like, I like I like selling art for regional prices, and getting into people's hands, so, like so they can enjoy them. All right, let me talk about some other things real quick. I'm I'm doing I'm doing all the giant stuff first, just to kind of get out of the way. <laughs> I just want to show some some toy stuff real quick, just some some ideas. Hopefully, everyone is not getting too bored. How are you doing, Andrea? You're you're you're. Are you talking with George? No, I'm. I'm uh, keeping an eye on Leroy. Maybe. Okay, well, I'm glad. I'm glad keep, someone keep an eye on him. So here's the, some of the some of the package ideas. Now, like, what's going to be fun about about the toy is we're going to have a plethora of of board backs, um, GI Joe style, which we see here. This is this is the first one I came up with. Uh, I'm also going to do another one that is more of a uh, traditional type of G.I. Joe with the red, orange, and yellow blast behind him. Um, but I also have another one. Let's bring it up. It is... Let's see. There you are, sir. Now, this one's not quite complete yet, but... Uh, this one's kind of more of um, the superpowers uh, type layout. I like that a lot. Uh, yeah. Behind the Johnny Phantasm, it's going to be more ghostly. I kind of just put in that, that that squiggle just as a placeholder. 
Um, so, so what's going to be here is, and the toy looks different now too. That's just another placeholder. But we're going to have the package with the toy, the the blister pack next to it. That's going to have his extra head in there, and probably his guns. His guns might be in his pouch. I don't know how we're going to pack them up yet. And then in that circle area that you see up to the right, there's going to be a bubble on top of that, and that's where the poker chip is going to be because with the toy, you're you're, you're going to get a poker chip. So it, there's going to be three different bubbles on here. Um, also, uh, Camel Moon is doing a package for me as well. Um, kind of the uh, Batman '89 uh, package feel from 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 the the, the Keaton movie. Um, we're gonna have another GI Joe one as well, um, and then you know I'm, I'm probably gonna be doing a Star Wars style as well, and then of course, what's next, Leroy, He Man. We're gonna be doing a, a, a He Man type uh, style uh, packaging as well. Um, with, where, where the bubble is going to be centered, uh, opposed to off the, off to the side, because the, all the human packages are all in the center. Um, and I might have some of these done, uh, for, for us to see, um, for the pre-launch. Um, but if not, we're just, I'm going to have this, uh, just some of the toys, uh, some pictures and I'll show those off right now. Uh, let's see. I think I've, I think we've, we've, we've seen these. On here before but i'll talk about them anyway so here is the uh the the painted prototype of of johnny phantasm and then uh here's here's uh, him next to the black one now at this point i just had i had sticky stuff holding their arms on together like they're all put together now so for for some of the campaign shots like they're going to be a little bit better and also the spade is on his his gold but what you'll notice here is that like the gold is different in each figure. It's like the the, the gold in the eighty five uh, Johnny Phantasm is more more bronzy, more gold, shiny. Whereby the other one is kind of just like uh, McDonald's Fisher Price type type look. And that's you know all that's on purpose. All that's to kind of go with the feel nineteen seventy seven versus eighty five. And also um, I got a, I got a little heads up from the people that are making the toys that that know about collectors, and they were just helping me tweak things a little bit here and there to kind of get collectors uh, more interested. Um, here we have some of the, the actual master copy that like, these are photos from, from China. Hmm. And uh, like, you can see like how crisp, like the collar looks, the chain, yeah. super detailed, you know, a lot better than, than, than the, the prototype that I had. Yeah, definitely. And then I, I actually got some some more test pictures of um, the guns fitting in the holsters because that was something that I was worried about. I was looking at the the, the space and it was, it was pretty tight, so I wanted to get pictures of those. They sent me pictures of those, but they're like I don't know why, but they asked me not to share those pictures. Um, I'm not I'm not sure why, but they were like, "Don't show these off." So I was like, "All right." Um, and then I also got pictures of just like. The, the cubes of plastic, just just the pictures of just the plastic that they're going to be using for like for the toys, just to make sure it looked good um, from from my POV. Uh, but yeah, yeah, super excited about this. I mean, it's been a journey, um, and it's it's going to be exciting to to actually have like a toy in in our possession. And and it's one of those things that it's like uh, everything worked out. You know, it's like it's not often that everything works out. Um, and everything's working out pretty well so far. Um, but the toy is going to be a big deal for us. Once once I get the toy in my possession and everything's printed, you know, we can say who's making it their their way. No one can stop them. You know, it's like my my main concern is that that someone's going to throw us under the bus or something like that because we're comic skate. So that's why I'm not really talking about the uh, like who's making it. Um. So yeah, let me see if I have anything else. I had, I had a couple things queued up. I'm gonna make sure I covered everything I wanted to cover. Uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, there's a couple things I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a bit of a toy toy unboxing, but um, what do what do you get to talk about, uh, Blake? Well, I mean, I can talk about a couple of things. I guess uh, one of the things I want to talk about is a campaign that launched earlier this week. Um, it's for a video game called Hero Potential. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't know if anybody's been following that. It's a we'll bring multiplayer it up. online game. Let's see. Are you bringing it up? I'll, I'll bring it up. 
Okay. I was gonna talk about this That's, next week because I have some. Okay. I have, some, but 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 continue to talk about this. I'll bring okay. it up. Yeah, we'll talk about it at least a little bit today. Um, so yeah, it's a multiplayer online game. But right now, it looks like it's going to be on Steam, and they're trying to get on some other platforms also. But it is crowdfunding on Indiegogo. Um, it's a superhero action game. But there's going to be DLC packs that include uh, some indie comics characters, comics eight characters, whatever word you want to use. Yep. Uh, they include uh, Cyber Frog. Uh, Cecil and at least a few of the Jawbreakers. I'm not sure if it's the entire team. I think it may be. Um, definitely well, Silkworm well, and Knife Hand. Well, since, and Cubs. Since, since since you're talking about it, I was going to save this next week. But uh, there's also another character, CG character, that's going to be in this 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 game, and that's Johnny Phantasm. Hooray! Yeah, so I didn't mean to push so, you into that too hard. <laughs> so, so no, well, because because someone I'm did good. that. Someone, That's someone cool. did that, did that little figure, that little animated figure. So I posted it, uh -oh. and then this gentleman uh -oh. uh, like reached out to me immediately, and was like, "Hey, do you want Johnny Phantasm to be in this game?" And I looked at it, uh, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, I would like to see Johnny Phantasm fight next to Cyberfrog. That'd be great." But not only is Johnny Phantasm going to be the in this, so is the Scarlet Heart. So we're going to have Johnny Phantasm and the Scarlet Heart in this game. Um, let's go ahead and just watch this. <laughs> Only you could stand between an evil rogue AI and the rest of humanity. Choose your hero, pick your powers, and achieve your potential to win. Hero Potential is a four-player co-op superhero survival shooter with 20 weapons and 55 powers to choose from. Collect bounties, upgrade your powers, and call in better weapons to help you survive. When humanity cries for help, it's all on you to save them. In this action-packed third-person shooter, only you can achieve Hero Potential. A powerful hero sensing the end of humanity reaches into other worlds for help. Cecil. The Jawbreakers. And Cyberfrog. All these heroes are available in the first two official downloadable content releases, and both are available at launch. Back this project today to bring the fight for humanity to life. Hero Potential is only available on Indiegogo. So yeah, that's pretty exciting. Uh, I'm very excited to see Johnny Phantasm in there. Um, I was just talking to to the gentleman, uh, you know, yesterday about you know what his powers are, like what his special his special powers are going to be in the game. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I mean, I think the game looks pretty good. I, I, I believe, I believe these guys used to work for Disney or a Disney app game possibly. Um, but it, you know, if anyone's interested in, uh, you know, playing games themselves, but also, you know, for your kids, you know, like getting your kids in, into, into some good su superhero games. Um, this kind of reminds me of a, a more fun version of city of heroes. Remember city of heroes? Um, but this looks great, uh, and I'm excited for it. Blake, you're muted. Yep. I was going to say that uh, there's also going to be a single-player, uh, some sort of single-player campaign or some sort of single-player uh, mode in the game because it, it's primarily a multiplayer okay. game, but there will yeah. be a single-player component to it. Uh, I hope that at some point that gets outlined a little bit more uh, for folks who know because I don't really play very much online multiplayer but i would play this if there was a, a pretty robust single player campaign mm. yeah 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 for for me I, I like kind of like the single player um games especially when there's like a story i, I was a real big fan of star wars battlefront in in story mode um but yeah so like we're like we're gonna be watching this one um you know if you're if you're interested in it you know back it for for you or your kid um i mean it, it's it's just i mean it's great like yeah, I was I was talking to Will from Camel Moon about this, and it's just it's it's just awesome seeing all these 
things kind of happen in, in the comic skate universe where there's like there's animations now and now there's video games and there's toys it's like we have our own industry going on over here it's pretty cool tv yeah. shows you know yeah and 20 bucks gets you the be the base game as i understand it and if you want to get the dlc packs that come with these uh, cg characters that's i think is a uh, 40 dollars uh -huh. it's like a season pass you'll get the game plus the dlc packs for all the stuff that comes out post launch, if I if I'm reading it right, so that's not a bad deal. Forty bucks for all that. No, and it goes to a good cause too. You know, in the indie stuff. Oh sure. Uh, but you know, I, I was surprised about this because I, I didn't even hear about it until. You mentioned it, Blake, and then r right after you mentioned it is, is when they hit me up. Like, I didn't even know about this. I remember uh, Ethan showing Cyberfrog in a video game, but I had no idea that it had a name or anything like that yet. Well, the Cyberfrog video game that Ethan showed, like, almost two years ago, I think, at this point, uh, is a different game. Oh, uh, uh, well, 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 something completely different. He, he showed clips from this recently, though, because oh, I saw – okay. Yeah, I've seen him show clips of this, but he, he didn't say what the name was. Um, but it's called Hero Potential. So – we're gonna keep an eye on that. I think it just I think it just launched. I think he's doing like the mm -hmm. the 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 usual CG thing we do thirty days to thirty days. So Yeah, right. it launched last week. Okay. Late last week. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna watch this closely, obviously. Um and we're gonna help this guy get funded. Uh and then it looks like it's almost done the game. Uh you know, I'm not sure. You know, like I know I know video games, it's all about engines, you know, and if you if you got an engine, it's just you're like the engine's the hard part, you know. Like putting in all this stuff on top of it is kind of easy, but once you get the engine done, um, it's pretty much done. You can you can fill in the blank with anything. I guess it all depends on if he's doing a type of story. I, I think it'd be fun if there's a, a type of story where it's like maybe maybe there's like blue-haired whales that like run the city, and we have to fight them off or something. A, a blue-haired whale would be a funny vo uh, like boss villain. That would be fun. <laughs> like like the brain of Metro. Sponge. Yeah. Yes. Yes. My mother brain. Um, <laughs> yeah. One thing it, it does look playable. Um, I don't know if I'd say it looks almost done. It looks like it does need some polish from, from my eye. And also it seems like there could be more environments and things. So I, I sh assume there's still plenty that is being now, worked now, on behind I'm gonna the show, scenes. I'm going to show a campaign that I, I saw mm -hmm. last night and like, I know nothing about this. I, I don't know if these people, you know, like what, what sides of the spectrum they're on. Uh, but I, I saw this the other day, and I thought it looked pretty fun. Yeah, I've seen it, that one. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's kind of has like this cool style. Well, it, it starts off with a, with a subject matter that I like very much, so, and that is um, that 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 um, group of planes that that went flying over the Bermuda Triangle uh, in 1945 that 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 went missing. Um. I've been wanting to do a comic book about this forever, so just seeing it uh, excited me. But this art is very interesting. I, you know, I'm not sure if comic book people will enjoy it, but it, it looks very dizzy, very fun. Nazis are the bad guys, as they should be. Sailor Nazis is pretty fucking funny. <laughs> so the, I guess everyone just gets lost in this area, and it becomes just sort of like a war zone for them. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I guess you got to buy the book, but I like the art. The art reminds me of um, Disney's Atlantis. Hmm. It's the long lost uh, Disney animated film based on the long lost city. Yeah. That no one, no one ever talks about it anymore. So yeah, I mean, again, like I don't know anything about this book, but it looks fun. Um, I, I just. Late last night, I was just kind of just scrolling through uh, Indiegogo, and it just popped up, and I was like, oh, this looks fun. I never heard of it. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty close to meeting its goal with plenty of time left. Um, there's a digital version. How much is the standard um, physical version there? Was it 25 Yeah. Yeah, okay, 25 for for the book. It looks thick. How many pages is this thing? 90 pages. These right. people are crazy. At least they put it on there. I was looking. I won't say the name of the campaign, but I was looking at a camp campaign earlier this week, and mm. I was thinking about writing on it, and it didn't even say how long the page, the book count was, or the page count was. Mm. Uh, okay, I don't know if this is twenty pages. I don't know if this is a hundred pages. Well, it, well, it's That's interesting because 
you know, like with when like when it comes to campaigns, uh, you, you have to ask yourself. When we were talking about Sean Gunner Murphy last night, like his book is what like 120 pages. The the it's somewhere around that, yeah. Potholes. Um, and it's like he would have sold just as many if it was 48 pages. Like he didn't sell he didn't sell any more because it was three times the size of a regular, you know, CG book. Um, but he gave himself so much more work to do. Um, you know, so so some of that stuff is you, you have to you have to be mindful. You know, for those of you that are putting together campaigns, don't don't say you're going to do you know 200 pages, you know, uh, and have it to them within a couple months. Um, and plus, it's like you have to ask yourself the question, and, and you know, if this book is 200 pages, is it going to get me that that many more sales? Is it worth it? Because um, in the long run, I, I would say the answer is probably no. It's like uh, when, when people back books, they, they're kind of backing people and ideas, not just like the girth of the book. I mean, it's important for it to be, you know, to a certain point, because what, what, what Blake was just saying, like, you know, like someone didn't even say how many pages it is. It could be 10 pages, you know? Um, but, uh, you know, if you go, if you bite off more than you can chew, then you, you might be painting yourself in the corner and losing some money potentially. Um, so, I mean, this book looks, looks good. I think, I think a hundred pages is, is a little much, but I mean, maybe, maybe they already have it done. It looks like they have a, a lot done. So maybe it's already done. Maybe, maybe this was already a Kickstarter and they just brought it over. But anyway, yeah. So again, like, I don't know anything about these guys. I just thought the book was cool and I wanted to share it like with you guys. Andrea, what do you have to talk about today? Um, well, the, uh, scout listed the shepherd. Oh yeah, I saw that the, the black caravan. Yeah, so yeah, I, I've probably given up on you and crowdfunding, <laughs> but you know, it, everyone's got to grab their own path. Um, but like, like, what, what do you have to like? Do you have any any more news besides that? When's when's that coming out? Uh, well, issue one. This is all volume one. Uh, issue one will be out in January. I think it's like January. Will be in stores what uh, January twenty seventh. Okay. And then two months after that in April, uh, it'll be uh, the entire volume. So Scout has what's called the nonstop and yeah. they do a, w issue one for collectability. And then two months after that, they drop the entire trade. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, I, I like, I, I'm, I'm very interested to, to find out what, like what your numbers are going to be like, you know, obviously but, like I'll tell you when I, when I know. Yeah. Well, I'm just curious. Cause I mean, I mean, you and I know what the caliber numbers are, you know, and I, I'm, I can I'm just fall down and do better than I did at caliber. Yeah. To be honest, it, I don't it, 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 you, you, you'd have to try to do worse than, yeah. you know, you'd have to really put in the effort to do worse than caliber. Oh. <laughs> have, have, have you, have you talked to them caliber since you left? Uh, a little bit here and there. I mean, it's, um, we left on good terms. Yeah, I know, know that. I know that. It's just that the difference is that Scout is so much more aggressive. Yeah, yeah, because they they want to publish comic books. Yeah, you know. So what's it's up, George, how are you doing? Hey, what's there. happening? Hey, hey doctor. George. Hey, Blake. Hey, George. What's going on? Not much. Congratulations, Patrick. You're doing real well. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. I'm 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 happy. Uh, and I, I'm, people are happy. I'm happy. Things are going well. Um, the the twenty five thousand poster. It's going to be a folded poster. Yes. It's going to be attached in the book, or it'll be separate. It's separate. Okay. Yeah. Have, have you shown the twenty, the thirty thousand poker chip yet? No, no, no. I, uh, I, I, I really. It was funny because last night, like, I was all excited about that, and then I forgot. I was like, oh shit, I have to, I have to make that poker chip. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, I, I'm actually, I, I, it might be a surprise what that poker chip looks like. It, it might be like, I, I, it might be one of those things that. Uh, once you see it, you'll you'll you know, or once you get it in hand, that's when you're going to see it. Because I might change it. I, I'm 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 toying with doing kind of like a, a curveball. I like I'm saying it's going to be the 1986 New Year's poker chip, um, but there is a possibility that it might have something to do with a future campaign, just kind of like an Easter egg. Okay. So it's gonna it's gonna be one of those things that 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 we're gonna we're gonna hold off and people are gonna see it later on. You also said something earlier. You said you were going to show the uh, revised version of the dress of the cover, but you never showed it. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I was just going to do that. Let me let me go ahead and pull that up. 
Why Again, like, that up, I can talk about George's awesome shirt there, which he got on our Teespring store. <laughs> what's up, Leroy? Which is our Festival of Dread, the Splintering Festival of Dread shirt. So I didn't. I, di I didn't do that on purpose, actually. <laughs> Well, I appreciate it more if you had. Well, uh, um, I, I did yeah. it on purpose, actually. All right, so. awesome. That's <laughs> awesome, George. Thanks. Thanks for the free plug. But yeah, you can pick that up on our Teespring store. That is the only way to financially support the Splintering website is through the Teespring store right now. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, you can see they, they're real. The shirts are real. I have one exactly like that. <laughs> exactly like it. Yeah, black with that logo on it. Exactly like that. Leroy, how are you doing? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you Dude. doing, Andrea? Good. All right. Wait, you were going to, you were talking about the scout solicitation doctor, but um, the the book that's being solicited is not what you're crowdfunding. It's separate. Like what? It's the it's the first volume. Yeah, it's not the it's not it's the not, Valentine. Okay, it's, so you're crowdfunding the Valentine, but there'll be a tier in the Valentine that's going to include what's in the solicitation. Correct? Absolutely. Yeah. But there'll be. That's part of the thing is I wanted to kind of get some of that initial stuff squared away. So I may, I may rethink the timing on the, on the Valentine. Okay. So this, this is, this is probably what the final dress is going to be like. Um, I'm still messing with the logo up in the left, left hand corner. I want to have not just Johnny Phantasm's face. I want to have like the Scarlet Heart and some of the other characters in there, like the old school type of Marvel look. Um, and I'm still messing with the green that 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 where it says Johnny Phantasm, um, but uh, this this is a little bit closer than 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 what I initially put up on the uh, Indiegogo. Now I like the looks of it. it, it it's weird. It's very interesting. It's like uh, at first when I first saw it, I was like, "This looks weird," and then I looked at it for a second. A little bit more and then it, and then i digested it and i was like okay i, I see it because I, I was expecting you know being michael golden i, I thought it was going to be you know michael golden from the 80s but this is like new school michael golden this is like it, it like it looks like an it's it's animated it looks like he's drawing an 80s cartoon yeah 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 like he, he really got into it so uh, you know i was expecting something else at first glance i was like i don't know how i feel about that um and then after kind of digesting for a second, uh, I was like, no, I like this. I love this. This is great. I mean, there was a couple of tweaks that, like, that we had to make. Uh, I, I was showing to, to uh, the doctor when we first got it. Um, he, he, he blurred the pumpkins initially in the bottom because he wanted to have some motion in there. And it was a little too blurry. Uh, so, so I asked him to kind of take off that layer because I saw that it was just a layer that was just adjusted. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm loving this thing. Uh, it, it looks really good. Um, we're we're pot are potentially talking about uh, getting the other Michael to to do a piece for us. Um, that'd be Michael Zek. Ooh. So um, that's next on on uh, Evan's hit list. <laughs> he, mm -hmm. he 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 because you know Michael Zek also works with the same uh, um, art handler that mm -hmm. Michael Golden works with. So uh, you know that's 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 who um, uh, Evan wants to get next is Michael Zek, and I think. I, I mean, I'd be really stoked on that as well because he, he's also another one of my favorite comic book artists from the '80s. Yeah, mine too. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm 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 happy how this turned out. Um, I I thought it was a good um, addition, um, but also, uh, you know, as, as far as just learning how to do this campaigning thing, right? Everyone's got to have their own flavor. You know, it's like some people kind of leave their campaign up forever. You know, and this and, and they'll and they'll keep it up for like a year or so and and just constantly promote it and and that's great you know it's like if you want to do that for me it gets a little exhausting i like having a little bit of some breaks in there um but then i also like the john malin model where you know it's two months and that's it you know there's there's no horsing around we, so we something were... some so something that we did with this one is we did the first month and then the second month things changed slightly and then we went in demand for one month so i think that that might be our model might be three months just first month, second month, third month of in demand, and that's it. You know, because it's just when 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 some of these campaigns are just up forever, and then people have like four or five campaigns going at the one time. It's a uh, it's a lot for people out there. You know, it's like it's it, I think just in and out. You know, keep things moving, and and I think the key to that is uh, 
just when you put your your book back up like Malin does, you just make your old book available and you need to get more sales. So it's like if people miss out on it, then they kind of thirst for it. And then when you put it back up, they jump on it, you know, and I kind of. How many extra copies are you going to print of uh, Phantasm this time? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I was I was thinking about that, and I was talking to to, to Peter about that actually a couple of days ago too, um, because I'm starting to get things ready to kind of you know send them his way, and I was just asking him about printing. Um, our, our minimum, I mean, obviously, like we're going to get 500. That's the minimum. Um, and we're going to get, you know, half are going to be my cover, half are going to be Michael's. I'm not sure if we're going to get 600 or if we're going to get 700. Um, it's not going to be like a whole lot. I are mean, we- it's going to be enough just for me to have a couple extra. Um, maybe uh, a few, maybe for the toy campaign as well. Um, but it's not going to be a a, a bunch. Um, because because the- cause, cause, cause when we redo it, I want to have a different cover. Which of these covers is going to be, is one of these ex- covers going to be exclusive to this campaign? Uh, they they both are. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. I mean, these, these covers won't be used again. Um, if we, if we do, if we do the Johnny Phantasm 1985 with the toy campaign, I want to use the Kelsey Shannon artwork for the cover. Um, and then Man, you're going to make me buy it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, well, here's the thing with, with the toy, um with the toy the 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 price is going to be worked out in your favor where it's like the comic book is going to be i'm going to i'm using this quotation marks free so it's like the toy might be like 45 dollars, but you get a comic and a bunch of other shit um again like I don't other know. shit yeah um Pat, Patrick, you should mention your um what's one thing you don't do your big cartel store because a lot of people ask me where can i get the first volume and I'm mm. seeing it in the chat now. People are talking about it. They're buying it on eBay. Well, well, well I'm actually – here's the thing, and, and this is why I don't plug the Big Cartel a whole lot. I actually need to get the wife to take it down is because I actually don't have any of the, 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 the first Johnny Phantasms anymore. Whoops. Um, it, like people at the Big Cartel already bought them all. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, it, like, like, like Big Cartel is basically only good for prints and some other things right now. I need to – actually, maybe, maybe I'll, 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 I'll write the, the wife right now. <laughs> If you're sending people over there, George, my fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like uh-huh. if, if, if you if, if you go to Big Cartel and you see the if you see the books up for sale, like they're actually not there, so don't buy them. Um, so like like the best way to get to get the first uh, volume of Giant Phantasm is is in the uh, the campaign, um, and uh, I mean like we'll it'll be available again uh, in '93. And then also in 2001, and then but then when we do 2001, it's going to be a full graphic novel as well. So, um, you know, it's all it's all up to you if if you want to wait to the next campaign or if you want to do it now. Um, you know, it's it, it's up to you. There's a uh, limited number of those uh, t- those tiers available too, right? With, right with, that with the the uh, Michael Golden? No, with the 93 or the 870. With the yeah, whole, so, yeah, 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 the yeah, whole yeah, yeah. yeah. I think there's 50, right? Totally. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, so, and, and that's basically because I, I, I didn't want to order more than like a hundred because we actually sold a lot already in the first first half of the campaign. Mm. Um, but I didn't want to do a huge order. I just wanted to do an order of about a hundred. Um, we ordered them from a place called Kablam, um, and and they already have the book on file, so it's going to be easy just to kind of hit print. Uh, so yeah, I have another question. Sure. You mentioned before you were going to drop the. Um one of your song, the song from the video as a free download. You still going to do that or no? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do that. I'll do it. And think, and thanks for reminding me. I had someone like, like writing me in, in the Indiegogo, uh, you know, asking me where they can get that song. And I, I, I will set that up. Just, just remind me. Oh, also George, thanks for all those comics that you sent. I'm going to be talking about those sometime during the week. Oh, oh yeah. No problem. You're welcome. Yeah. George sent me a bunch of comics. Here's one of them. It was a, uh, I can't, a, I can't see it. You know what it is. Oh no! Now I can see it. Yep. Is that is that a Dan oh. Fraga? Uh, yeah. That's a Wizard exclusive. That's yeah. if you top left corner, you'll see a gold foil, and there'll be a little certificate in the back. That's a Fraga signed one. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I I showed him some of these. I, like you, you pretty much like send me like send me everything from that from, Gear, from this book. Not every variant, but every issue that was released from Gear Station, I did send you. Yes. Yeah. For it's pretty crazy. 
I appreciate that. And there's some Toth in there and some uh, yeah, Tim, yeah, Tim Sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw some of that. I'm, I'm very excited. And all that. I'm going to talk about that later on. Okay. Um, Le Leroy, how's, how's the chat going? Uh, pretty good. A lot of people in here like Badger and like they, they're the regulars in my show. So that's awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I love watching like your show. It's like, it's like market research. Yeah. But don't say that because then I don't want people thinking they're showing up to my show to be a focus group. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's why I like it. I, I'm sitting there like I'm taking notes, like me and Shane watch it and we're just like taking all these notes. <laughs> no, we just do it to hang out and get to know each other. Because you know, you as a we all know each other from the chat, you know, mm -hmm. but we know we don't know each other. So it's cool to hang out and get you know they come on the panel. You know, we get new people on the panel. We get to learn who they are, and yeah, maybe they're not just a dick in the chat that makes fun of Andrea the whole show. Maybe that's not who they really are. You never know. <laughs> well, maybe that's exactly who they are. It could be. <laughs> but it's it's very interesting with, with Leroy's style, like like. He always has to find someone to go after on the show, and on my show, it's Andrea. <laughs> when, when when I'm on Shane's show, Leroy goes after me. Everybody has to be the heel, dude. Yeah, I, I guess someone has to be like the color commentator, you know? Right. I always say, yeah, Andrea, don't feel bad. I always say, like, when Patrick joins Shane's channel, I'm like, oh, here's Patrick. He's he's here to fail the chat again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always there to, 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 to stop Shane from going into a, a, a spiral. Blake put stop up it. another Blake yes. put up another uh, crowdfund review this week. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Blake, uh, what, what, I did. What, what, I guess what, I did. What would you bring up the splinter ring? Let's, let's look at that for a second. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me try to do this share screen thing. Cause... Andrea, do, do, do you have anything that you want to share? Uh, let me give it some thought because I did a ton of editing this week, but it was a lot of scripts. So yeah. The, in terms of visuals, I'll have to give some thought about what to show visually. And and, and I appreciate you uh, hammering out that that Johnny Phantasm script. I haven't had a chance to go over it yet, um, just because I've been busy. But I'm get, like today's my day for that. My birthday. Happy birthday! Thank you. Hey. Okay, let me know when I'm sharing. You're sharing. You can see. Oh, okay, fantastic. All right. So yeah, this week we're still full steam ahead with the Festival of Dread stuff. Um, we can go through what we've done this week. I reviewed. Yeah, I reviewed this book here, Fubar Festival, uh, Empire of the Rising Dread. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Tell them. Fubar Empire of the Rising Dead, which is an Alterna Comics uh, anthology book. Uh, it was published several years ago, um, but it's about zombies in World War II on the Eastern Front in Japan. So all the stories inside the book, they're not like tied together by um, like a shared world necessarily. It's just the theme is. World War II, zombies, Japanese front, go. And it's actually turned out really well because sometimes anthologies have, feel a little bit more disjointed than that. They could be a horror anthology or a sci-fi anthology, and they kind of mm -hmm. jump around. Um, this one, having those rules in place, made everything feel a, a little bit more unified and a little bit more satisfying, especially if you're a zombie fan. If you're not a zombie fan, you're zombied out, You know, I, I would skip it. But, um, yeah, so that one was fun. But I think what George is talking about is here, which is the deep dark. So we did, yeah, we did a crowdfunding review. I wrote this one, even though it still says staff up there because I haven't changed it yet. For things to go out on the social media pages. What is the story publish, about? Yeah. I have to publish things as staff and then change it later. What's, it, what's, really the, what's the story about the, the deep dark? Yeah. yeah, so this is the deep dark. Uh, huh? This is one of Gilbert Deltrez's books. He is doing the um, the book Black, for Scout Black Comics, Black. which is oh gosh, what is it called? The the one with the capybaras in it. Shoot. Anyway, but yeah, he's also got another book right now called the Black Black Manor. Is that what Black, it is, George? Black Heart Manor. It's on Indiegogo right Manor. now. Mm -hmm. So he's done this book first, which is a Lovecraftian story. It's a horror story, black and white on the inside. And it's got magazine proportions, so it's not uh, a normal comic size. That's cool. I like that uh, book. So yeah, he calls it a zine format. It was thirty I like, pages. I like when books are a little bit different size. You know, like mm -hmm. like Ninja Turtles, like the first, you know, that like the first Ninja Turtles series, how they were slightly yeah. bigger than normal comic books. I like when they do stuff like that. Yeah, the Tick was like that too. 
um, and some of the old, like uh, the old Vampirella book. I think they reprinted that last year for the anniversary, and it was oversized in the magazine format also. Um, but you can see some of the artwork here. Uh, the the deaths are uh, quite gruesome. I would say I I did enjoy the book. The artwork was great. Um, one thing about it though is that it kind of sets up the story, and then a large chunk of more than half of the story is just people dying. It's things get set up and then here we go. You know, more than half the story is just death scene, death scene, death scene, death scene, death scene. <laughs> um, that could be cool if that's for you. If it's not, just keep that in mind. But this book is going to be available or it is available right now in that Blackheart Manor campaign. So if you like what you see here and are sad that you missed it, you can go get it as part of that campaign. Um, I think either physical or digital. But yeah, so I gave the books, the story, and the art, and you know, the actual book itself, I gave it a B minus. As far as communication and fulfillment goes, um, Gilbert Deltres, I've, I've worked with him before on something. I actually edited one of his other books. Ah. Um, so I have a pretty good communication with him, but I did have to reach out and ask for some uh, digital files that he had promised for another book. Um, but he got back to me very looks quickly. Great. Just the yeah. the design and you know the composition it looks super good. Yeah, the artwork really is probably the high point of the book. Uh, I thought it was, <laughs> that's, that's always good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for a visual medium. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was great. There's there. Did I include any topless paid pictures? I don't know if I did. You did not. But, okay, I did not. All right, George, I didn't. But yeah, I gave the communication for filming a B plus. There's a lot of uh, topless ladies in this book. That's cool. Um, George yeah, so they, this is a this is a very adult book. This is not one for your kids. There's blood and death and topless ladies and you know it's it's Who's very that much guy? for adult. Work. That's him. That's that's Gilbert Deltres. Oh, right on. So the packaging and shipping. He saw oh, the picture of himself. He, no, those are his. Yeah, his Gemini mailer boxes. Oh, okay. And so I just wanted to show. Yeah, this is how I received my book, and it came in perfect condition. Um, you know, those are absolutely the best way to send the books as far as I can see outside of like a steel box. Yeah. We're going to be doing that for, uh, Johnny Phantasm 85. Yeah. So no real complaints about that. He also sent, uh, the book in a bag and board that was sized for that magazine, you know? So it, that was kind of nice. I didn't have to go try to track down one specific bag and one specific board that were going to be big enough to hold that thing. Cause it doesn't fit in the normal comic box the same way or in one of those bags. Uh, stretch goals were a little thin, um, and the bonuses were a little thin, but I did get those digital files, which were, um, a book that he did with the same artist called under the flesh and they're nice books. I, I may review them at some point, but, um, other, otherwise I got a bookmark, which was cool. Had the, uh, sexy redhead from one of the variant covers on it. So, you know, solid B plus there. And overall, I think it's, a, it was a good campaign. Everything came uh, as promised, I thought the quality <laughs> was good. The only thing, I mean, the, the story, it, it did run a little thin with, you know, like I said, death scene, death scene, death scene. So it kind of ran out of steam uh, as far as the setup goes. But uh, I, I still enjoyed it. And uh, I know George, I think, is, is, is backing the Blackheart Manor book. It's on my <laughs> list, but there's so many freaking oh, things, okay. man. Like, November's going to be crazy. Like, Yeah, it's tough. Now, now I'm hearing about the giant phantasm figure, too. It's just... Holy moly! Yeah, well, Blackheart Manor. You, if you go to the the splintering, and you if you want to find the, the shortcut for, we can pull it up right here, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Are, are you mad at? at are you mad at me, George? Uh, oh George no, is I'm always mad at you. I, I just seem that way. That's just how I. That's just how I live. <laughs> we have to put the toy out sometime. It's no, George, no, that's George's natural state, Patrick. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, okay, it's past so my nap time. Here's the other campaign. This is Blackheart Manor again. He's doing it as a Lovecraftian horror zine, so it's going to be that different format um let's see so you know nice more black and white artwork on the inside here and i'm definitely watching this one also i have not backed it yet it's also on my short list george but i am in right there with you where I, the money starts running out um and so you have to start making some hard choices and i've made some that I think worked out and some that I've very much regretted uh, over the years. But I should point out, you know, like I said, Gilbert Deltrez has fulfilled, I think, one, at least two campaigns prior to this. No, three, because he did Lair. Uh, he did Pistolera, which is the one I helped him edit. 
And then he also did uh, The Deep Dark. And the other book is called Galactic Rodents of Mayhem. That's the book that he crowdfunded and is being published through Scout, if I, under, if I understand that correctly. That's a fun title. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like a yeah, sci-fi Ninja Turtles thing. So he's someone who has delivered consistently. Uh, the Deep Dark came not quite on time, but it came in, I think, May when it was supposed to ship in March. It was only two months late, right when COVID was going nuts. So really not too much to complain about as, as far as delivery is concerned. So I think, you know, if you're concerned about, you know, maybe a creator that you haven't worked with or, or supported before, uh, Deltrez is, has delivered several times. And that's important. You know, like mm -hmm. I, uh, there's like an epidemic of people that are crowdfund books that have never made a comic book before. Um, and then also, you know, it's like I'm, I'm very skeptical of those people, but people that, I, that have never made a comic book and also fulfilled it because fulfilling it is it's hard. You know, that's why when when Evan and I did it, we did a, a very small push for uh, Giant Phantasm 1977 the first time around well, without the extra pages. We, we, we did a thin graphic novel, um, you know. Uh, Malin helped us a little bit, and I was on Ethan's show a couple times. But this is like way back, you know, 2018 when CG was just getting started. And we were kind of just in and out. We just wanted to kind of just see if we can do it, you know? And yeah. then we, did, we, you know, we did it pretty well. And then, you know, I think we did all right with 77. So now with 85, like we have a, we have a good grasp on it. So it's like when, when people do these elaborate things and they've never made a book before and their books, 200 pages and it's like, and then they have to fulfill. It's like, there's a lot of promises. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. the way I remember it, Patrick, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you, when you did 77 through Alterna, you only had a 30 day campaign and then you put it in demand and it wasn't in demand for very long. You, Yes, well, well, yeah, I mean it wasn't even it wasn't even in demand. We we, we just we we put it up for uh, three days, like you said, and then we uh, it was it in demand for like a week. It was like a thirty days and a week, and then we we yeah and we took it out. And, and one of the reasons why that was that that way was, is is because we we pre ordered the books with Alterna, because as soon as we got word that Diamond was shutting down. Um, you know, I turned to Evan and I was like, we have to put books up right now. We have to do it. So we, we, we had some extra pages that we added to the Johnny Patterson story. We, we broke it down into three books and we, and we, and we pre-ordered 1500, you know? Um, and we, and we kept some of them that, that were available at the beginning of the 85 campaign. But, uh, yeah, we were, we were in and out. Um, so, so this one has gone a little bit longer for us, but again, you know, just kind of what, what I was commenting about, you know, I'm very wary of, of, of people that have never made books before or done crowdfunding, you know, and would, if, it's, if it's both, I'm super, I won't, I, I, I probably won't back it. You know, I, I would say this Patrick is like, it used to be like you backed everything from CG. And now I think up, up to pretty recently, it was like, now you will back anything that somebody's delivered before. I would caution now creators to, to, to really think about what kind of book they want to put out because we're getting to the point now where it's now you have to have delivered and it has to be an interesting topic because there's overcrowded types of books in CG right now. And if you just put out another one mm -hmm. that somebody else is doing, it's not going to get back. I yeah. Mean, yeah. I, I, like I agree with that. You know, something that I like that Michael uh, Bancroft did, you know, since he's never really um, th done a crowdfunding book before and he's kind of new to the comic book scene. He, he, he has, you know, as he's finishing his pages, he has like these little icons on, on like the show, like how complete like the book is like a graph. Um, and I think that's good because like he, all the pages are up, all of them have color. He's working on all of them and like stuff like that kind of gives, uh, people some type of, um, uh, peace of mind that, that their books being worked on, you know, um, like there, they, like there's some people out there that, that haven't done any pages for their books, you know, and they're, you know, they're at like hundreds of thousands of dollars and I haven't seen anything. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's important just to kind of, uh, keep your backer up to date. Um, again, like I like Michael Bancroft. I, I he's got these little icons that show how far he is with each page. Um, he, he's keeping, he, he's giving the consumer, the backer some peace of mind that his book is being, that their book is being worked on. It's not like these people that, you know, and everyone knows who I'm talking about, but just take the money and they just disappear. You know, it's like, I, I haven't, there's three books out there that I still haven't got, you know, um, I'm seeing some in Walmart, you know, but uh, it's like, but, but you know, it's like, 
and then I'm seeing people working on Wizards of the Coast stuff, selling commissions, you know, but yet their books are not done, you know? And and, and, it, and it's it's sad because it's like certain people were pushed at the beginning of Comicsgate that people were just overly excited and just having good artists there, you know? It wasn't like, can this person produce stuff, you know? Is this person for the long haul? Is this person that's going to give up on Comicsgate and leave? Um, but anyway... Oh, my neighbors are fighting again. My neighbors always fight. Uh, 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 doctor, I, I saw a thing about the uh, upcoming scout solicitations for January, and I didn't realize this, that the scoot line is going to be $1.99 a piece. That's cool. Yeah, that's going to be the first issue. Um, they're going to they're making every effort to try to make them as affordable as possible. That's pretty cool. What's this, Patrick? So we we were talking about weird shaped comic books. This this is a comic book that I made. Now it's long. Like this is the center right here. So it's like when you get it, it's like the book is like long way. So when you open it up, it's like widescreen. Okay, so like the three hundred. Like three hundred. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but but smaller. Like like about this big. If you can mm. see my hand, I know it's all. But about this this size. But this is. I mean, this is a little teaser of kind of some of the stuff that I'm. Making going to be getting into now this is not the content that i'm getting into but this character might be involved in some of the stuff that i'm working on project superman um but i just kind of wanted to bring up just just this this was done a, a while ago uh but i really like this character um he doesn't he doesn't have a name his name he just says stand back i am radioactive it reminds you of iron giant yes Oh, yeah. Nailed it. But this this was just a little short thing that I actually did this while I was going to school at Ringling. Um, and this is a, a little okay. short thing that I did. But I've been wanting to come back to this character. Uh, and it looks like in, in Project Superman, th this guy is going to be hanging around. So, Yeah, the good. green against that orange really pops. I like that. Is that going to be the final name of the book, or is that a working title? Project. It's a working Superman. title. Okay. Project Superman. Uh, so I'm trying to think of what else I had to talk about. I, I I set out the invite to a bunch of people like Mandy and Shane and all them, but I think everyone is just still in bed. <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to get some people. I'm trying to think what what else did I say we're going to talk about in here. I don't know. Andrew usually brings up some indie book that I like. Oh yeah, about. Andre, like yeah. you haven't showed off anything today. What are we doing, Andre? Get with it. I've got a couple of things I can show. Uh, th this is more what I'm about to start out with. I guess is uh, kind of an update on uh, on a project. Don't show us a picture of your balls either again, Andrea. What? No, stop hazing us, please. All right. It's time for Andrew. It's time for Andrea to make us all feel dumb for about ten minutes. All right. so I'll, start out, I'll start out with this one then, if that makes you happy. Hopefully, it's it's part of the scoot line. Um, Ease us into it. Yeah. The this is actually the new. What I'm about to show you. This is the finished version, the letter uh, edition of the uh, of the new intro that I have for the shepherd. Well, that looks great. And this is a 12-page uh, introduction that I'll eventually be publishing as an in, independent, like mini, like Afghan type thing. But it, it's going to be a, a, a new introduction for issue one. This is going to be coming out in January. But uh, just to kind of show you uh, some of the art here. That looks saw, fucking great. A while back, you saw this. This is actually takes place in a real Egyptian tomb. So it's showing off. This is for you, Leroy, <laughs> to make you feel happy. Oh I, no! I'm looking forward to that. I, you know, like, I just hope like we can, like, so to clarify, we're go, we're going to be able to give issue one or volume one, whatever you're calling it, in the in the the crowdfunding yeah, campaign. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because the Valentine makes sense off of this. It it literally takes place a few months after after what's happening in this this volume. This 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 is the best that the Shepherd has ever looked. I Berto and I feel the same way. So like I mean, who, who, I, like I know you like jump around the artist, but you should you should hold on to this guy with dear life. It's not easy to hold on to an artist, first of all. But uh, yeah, 
I intend to. In fact, I've already put him to work on the the uh, burning maid, which is the one I was. I'm going to actually show you in a few minutes here. I'll show you some of the early pages on the burning maid. I'm really excited. I love the colors. Yeah, but I'm really excited about uh, even the lettering. Like my letterer here, I don't know if you can get a good look at this, but uh, um, he did he did kind of a little the symbol thing here for the for the shepherd that I'm kind of enamored with. Rather like that. But this is, um, this will be, like I said, it's a 12 page and it, it involves Egyptian mythology, uh, the gods Anubis, Toth, uh, Amut. I love Egyptian stuff. You know, I just, like, always been fascinated by it. Too. I just, I, I just put out the link for your mailing list in the chat. So if, if I, we got some new new people that like I haven't seen around. So if you guys haven't signed up for the mailing list, I just put it in the, in the link. It's free. Sign up for uh, the mailing list for this book. It looks pretty cool. Right. So this is, uh, you can see that I, I feel really good about, you know. <laughs> Super so, good. Yeah, I mean, like I, I, I've been following oh, wow. the, the, the Shepherd for a while, and this is the best look, so. Um, I love Egyptian stuff. Um, you know, especially, you know, going through all, like all my Freemason stuff. I had, to, I had to study a lot of, uh, Egyptian stuff. Um, so, I mean, I, I love, I love this. I get into it a lot. I'm going to take this down cause I don't want to, there's spoilers ahead. So I'm going to do that, but I will show you, uh, some of the brand new art that's coming out for the burning maid. And yeah. for those who didn't, you know, I haven't heard me talk about the Burning Maid. This is this is the most recent uh, writing project that I've done for the Shepherd, and the Burning Maid deals with Joan of Arc. And um, the I think most stories begin, comic book stories begin with the idea, of what if, you know? And so I I've thought about it is um, you know what if Joan of Arc, you know Joan of Arc was burned at the stake. And, you know, subsequently they had a trial that cleared her name, you know, because she was burned to the, at the stake for heresy. Real quick, real quick. There is 38 people watching. Let's all give it a thumbs up real quick. It, it kind of, it gets us in the, the like the rhythm of things. Um, if you're sitting there, just give us a quick thumbs up. Uh, let, let's get, I mean, I see two. So I know I, I did one and my, my wife probably did the other one. Uh, so yeah, everyone just kind of give us a quick thumbs up. Continue, doctor. Sure. So uh, her name was eventually cleared years later in a subsequent trial, and eventually she became a saint. Uh, she was canonized. But uh, my what if is what if she's in the afterlife and doesn't know any of that? Mm. And what if she's angry for what was done to her because it was extremely unjust. I love the whole idea of like being in the afterlife and not knowing. Yeah. So you know? basically what you're about to see is the opening pages for this book, uh, we it is a 106-page uh, graphic novel. See if we can get it to come up. 106-page graphic novel, and uh, it starts out in the seam, which is the afterlife. I mean, you can think of it as purgatory. I don't use that term because most people don't really understand what it is. Um, but the seam is the middle place, the transition. Are stupid? No, no, uh, but. So what's happening is there are three figures, three religious figures, church figures that were instrumental in her trial and getting her executed. And so what I imagine in the afterlife, she's repeating this cycle of hunting them down and killing them and making them live all of it over and over and over again. And so this is uh, this is page one. And what we see is it's nighttime in Rouen, France, and uh, this this priest is being chased down a dark alleyway. I'll just give you i I'm really pleased. This is the same artist that you just saw with the Egyptians. Oh, I can tell. So this is not in the Bill and Ted's continuity, I guess. <laughs> no. Okay. This, this style reminds me of Alex Maleev. Now we do intend to color this just to put in perspective, but this is yeah, where it's, it's like, I was kind of anti coloring the other stuff before, uh, but now I saw how good it looks. Now, now <laughs> I, I understand that it has to be colored. 
what's amazing about this artist is how well he reads my script. Uh -huh. like we, we've done we've done nine pages so far. What's, the, what's the name of the artist? Someone's asking. His name is Luca uh, Pansiroli, and uh, he's done That's work. Italian? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. He's a Tuscan. <laughs> uh, Tuscan artist. I'm working with a lot of Italians. That's how I got you, Panta Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, what's interesting is, um, you know, our dollar goes for more over there right now. Oh, yeah. uh, so, um, I mean, I, it's like it's it's a it's a mutual beneficial situation because we can help these these artists out there that that need some money. Our our dollar goes for more over there, so we can give them more work. Um, so it works out really good. I mean, I'm working with a, an inker right now in, um, in Indonesia and, um, you know, it's like, I'm making him a rich guy and it's not really costing me a whole lot. Yeah. Did you say his name was Luca Brazzi? <laughs> but I'm going to, I'll just show you a couple more, but I want you to yeah, see, I, love this. I want you to see the uh, sequence here. Cause the, the, uh, Burning Maid hunts him down and he falls here in the open sewer. Mm. This is the first time I've shown these. You guys, you should feel cool. special. Oh, we're, I'm, I feel very privileged. This looks not, great, Doctor. Not too privileged. I appreciate it. Let's see if I can. I mean, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is the uh, the final page of this particular sequence, uh -huh. but I want you to pay attention to the middle of it. This guy's head. Yeah, what does it say? It's the handprint of the of the ghost on the back of his head. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. And then this is the kill shot right here. Interesting. And what's particularly interesting, I this is the historian in me, but. Um, this character, his name is uh, Jean Devis Deviste. He was a basically like the prosecuting attorney that ended up getting her executed. And um, about seven years after her death, they found him face down in the gutter, dead in the in this open sewer, dead, with no explanation about what happened to her, uh, what happened to him. So I thought I'm going to go ahead and use that actual historical incident, and uh, and actually use it in the book. So that gives you a sense of where we're headed with that. But we're making really good progress. Like I said, nine pages already done of 106. And we just got started. Luca is, is doing really good work, as you can see. Yeah. Excited about that. And I actually have another project for The Shepherd. So I'm actually doing simultaneously doing two Shepherd novels. Um, the other one is called The Tether. And that's with a Spanish, um, a Spanish artist, the same Spanish artist that did The Valentine. Like, like España? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I, I love I love that you're keeping busy. Like you're kind of doing the same thing I'm doing where you're just kind of you're getting all your ducks in a row. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I mean it's, uh but uh and then I'm gonna show you one more thing if you don't mind. This yeah, is absolutely. I insist. um the most recent um development from a book that I showed you guys before called Rabid World. And this is a zombie book. Um mm -hmm. I would Compare it to like 28 days later. It's a what I would call a smart zombie book. It's more science oriented, although it has all the you know the gore and the blood and guts and all that stuff that you would expect of a, of a zombie thing. But um, this is a book that I'm really excited about. There, it's a four part uh, story. Oh, oh, I like this already. And this is an elite unit from the 82nd Airborne that is uh, tasked to go in and pull this doctor out who has. Uh, what they believe to be a potential vaccine to help deal with this. And they're about ready to go in uh, from the air. Hmm. And this, this artist is from the Ukraine. Oh. Now, interesting to me, this is just, this is something I would have corrected as the, as the writer, but I, I stayed out of it as the editor is that they have, uh, these are guys from the 82nd airborne and most of them have facial hair. I'm like, you better <laughs> for a while for that to be the, uh, I can't imagine they'd be on base and be allowed to special unit or not. But this is a group, it, they're different as what's typical with zombie stories. There are different groups in play. This is a group of people that have fled to a boat. And uh, this is actually taking place in Maryland. This entire story is taking place in Maryland. Um, so um, 
Blake, you might be interested. Yeah, uh, for yeah that. sure. More horror stories should take place here. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's a lot of uh, Civil War history in Maryland. Oh yeah, for uh, Edgar Allan Poe's buried here. I I like everything. I mean, I, I'm I'm loving everything. I just I wish there was a little bit more color. Yeah, they select color. I'm not sure how they choose where they're going to color because, like, you have the the obviously the uh, computer screens here that are colored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's some of it is kind of questionable. Um, I would never I, do a zombie book without cover color. That, that yeah. Like and this is almost not color, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, it's like I would either just go black and white completely or fully full color it. it this halfway thing isn't working for me. But I mean the line work is really good. Is this th this is a scout book? This is a scout book. It's like I said, this is the third issue of four. So what that means is now we have we we now can move to the stage where I'll talk to in fact I did this week. I notified the publishers. Hey, we have three or four in the can. Now we can start talking about scheduling this. So this will come out sometime, uh, I would say, in the latter half of two, 2021. But i um, real excited about this. We expect, I've been talking to the um, talking to the writer. His name is Todd Ziani. And uh, he uh, is telling me that we'll have the final artwork done for issue four uh, in by the end of December. So that's that's a good sign that we can have this entire thing done by the early part of January. Uh, scroll back up for a second. Sure. Annapolis. That's a I I, I I like over this past week I was hanging like um like half of my uh, wife's like her all her so her mom just got married and she had these new step sisters and step brothers and they're all from Annapolis. Hmm. And it was so crazy the the SJW programming that was going on the, the, some of the stuff that I was that I was hearing it was just I wouldn't just, take that for granted like that's uh, that's not normal for Annapolis. It's Annapolis not? Is a, no, Annapolis is a very military city. So Okay, okay, okay. So cuz cuz I was I was under the impression that that it was like an SJW no, safe that's haven. No, that's where the Naval Academy is, man. That, yeah, it's more it's more conservative than than that. But the state in the whole is. But in Annapolis, yeah, is, the state's pretty pretty uh, hard charger for that kind of stuff. You say? Yeah. Okay. A anyway, this this looks good. But I mean, again, like, why is it? I don't understand why it's like just the red is where the. Yeah, not sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. But that's uh, that's something. The line work looks beautiful. So we're, I think we're moving along pretty well with a number of books. I did a lot of work this week, but most of it was scripts. Mm. The so boring stuff. Decidedly less exciting for you to see. <laughs> um, What's in the box? So I don't know. Like I guess FedEx delivers on on uh, Sundays. Like I don't know. If, I don't think this, this was the post office, but my you know my daughter saw someone drop this off today and i was like was it fedex or was it the post office she said it was a, po a post office fedex guy <laughs> so, so, so I, I still don't know who brought this um but yeah so this this is my my i had a little birthday toy haul that i wanted to share with you guys fedex um, so, you could tell on the sticker okay you can yeah, the post office and the FedEx, you, they use two different stickers. All right. Well, I, I knew I was just kind of cu curious if it was, I mean, if it was UPS even. But uh, so, yeah, I ordered this. Uh, I, I, I do this thing at, at Big, Boy, Big Bad Toy Store where you can kind of get a pile of loot where you, uh, I'll make myself a little bit bigger. Jesus. Um, there we go. Um, but so I was, I was, I was, Getting a pile of loot, and then and then what I did was uh, I had some stuff on special order, and it came in, uh, and I was surprised that some of the stuff came in because like some of the toys in here that I ordered are super hard to to find, especially in stores. I mean, some of these things that you definitely can't find anywhere. Um, so this is my first time opening this. I don't even know what what's exactly in here. Um, here, first thing off off the bat. So I'm doing this thing, and I think Shane's doing it with me. But I'm 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 collecting all the Mandalorians. Let me see if I can get a better picture of her. There you so, go. That's from the Mandalorian. 
Who's well, that? it's from it's from um, Rebels. Oh so, yeah, uh, yeah. Easter like, or, Man- or Mandalorian helmet right there. That's when they made the the Asian girl all social justice and cut her hair off and shit, right? Uh, yeah, for a second. And what, there's one episode that that is you can tell it's totally like written and directed by SJWs. Yeah, but but, but for the most part, this show is pretty good. Um, it, it did kind of dabble a little bit with some of that bullshit, but um, there's some there's some uh. New Mandalorian figures are coming out. There, I think there is a, a Django Fett that you can get at Walmart right now. Shane just showed me, and then there's also a a Darth Maul um, Mandalorian figure. Now, if you don't know anything about the Darth Maul Mandalorian uh, connection, um, in the new season of Clone Wars, Darth Maul becomes like the king of like Mandalore, um, and he, he and he and he gets control of the dark saber, which is in the the TV show the uh, the Mandalorian. But but Darth Maul has that sword, and whoever has that sword is like king or whatever. That whole storyline turned me off on the whole series, Patrick. When it, that they introduced Darth Maul, just I mean, because like he's old, uh, and then the multi like what was it where you had all the portals to different what was it the times or whatever? Oh yes, the 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 um, uh, what's it called? The world between worlds. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah, it looks cool. The toy looks cool. I like those ones. I have the like a Jon Snow of that style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it might be the same manufacturer. Um, so I got those, and then like I, I hope I hope I hope the wife's not watching this part because she's gonna be like, "You already have that. Why do you order three more?" Um, <laughs> and and the reason is because there's this thing that's called army building, and you can't army build with this one. Now these these guys are super hard like to find uh at at stores um and i i did a special order for them i'm trying to get the light maybe i'll just turn my screen off that might work better there we go so i got one two and three and i already have a fourth one so now i have some guys to kind of attack storm shadow um, but these guys are super fun. I like these. And then you're such a nerd. Oh my God. Yeah, I am. That's fine. <laughs> and then, uh, I, I, I went ahead and just because he's just so gaudy, I went and, and got Pint Destro. The one that, the one that with the globe, the, the muscle top one. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's Pimp Cobra Commander. He's coming too, but this, oh. this is Pimp uh, Destro where he comes with these burning money and then like a cheetah cloak. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with these. So, I mean, I, I think I'm going to be done with toys for a while. I think I, well, although there, there's a couple things I still Aren't want. are you launching a toy campaign? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I'm done buying toys. <laughs> I'll say. Aren't you buying 600 of them here in a minute? <laughs> I know. I know. Now, now you're starting to sound like the wife. She's like. I did not think that we we're going to be in this spot. Where we're going to have 600 toys of, of your character in here. I want Whitney to put mine together when it ships to me. <laughs> I want it signed by you either. I want it signed by her. Yeah. yeah. She, she, she deserves a lot of credit. She, she puts up with a lot of shit. Um, but yeah, so, so, so that's my, my birthday toy haul. I'm going to, I'm going to go and open up some of the stuff here shortly, but I, I want to thank everyone for coming by. Of course. Um, I, you know, I, I love everyone coming in. Uh, Doctor, I appreciate you, Blake. Always, Leroy, you're you're a workhorse. You're, you're an unsung hero here. You uh, workhorse. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you you do a lot of plugging for me, and I appreciate it. Oh yeah, no problem, man. And George, you're you're so supportive. You send me lots of fun stuff, and I definitely appreciate it as well. Um, again, if you're out there watching, uh, I appreciate you watching it now. Uh, if you're watching it later, I also appreciate it. Make sure that you give us a, a thumbs up. If you haven't. Pull the trigger on Giant Phantasm 1985. Now is the time. It's going to be closing in a week. Um, so if, you, if you're if you on the fence, let's go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to be doing the pre-launching for the toy next week. Um, and then it's it's onward and upward after there. There's just lots of stuff planned for the whole the whole year. I mean, I, I literally have like my whole year planned out, which I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about. And, and I think that's the way I needed to do it, especially not teaching anymore. Um. Yes, I did. I did get. I, I did get this. Rick, I did get that. 
Uh, but 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 not for me. My 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 daughter got it. She she she. Sure. Uh huh. No no. I, I'm only collecting anything that's Mandalorian related because I mean, it, like that's the thing with toy collecting is like I mean I, you're gonna laugh because things seem to be out of hand. But if you don't watch it, things can get really out of hand. So you have to stay focused on, on what you're getting. I, I'm not when, one of those. I'm not one of those guys that just collects everything. You know. When it's you like, when you get really out of hand, will you let us know what it looks like, please? It, it, so I'll have bags. And, and and I just won't be streaming anymore. I just Patrick, I won't be I won't be around. Patrick, you're gonna have a mailing list to sign up for the figure, correct? Absolutely. Is, will there be any sort of perk to sign up? Like if you sign up, you get a poker chip or anything like that, or you you nailed it. Yeah. Well, because so 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 here's the thing. Um, I know some people are gonna want to are gonna want the poker chip, you know, but the poker chip's gonna be sealed in the package. So so if you sign up early. You're gonna get an extra poker chip. So, so for those of you that want to keep the toy in display, but you still want to have the poker chip with your rest of your poker chips, you're gonna get two poker chips. So, if you sign up early, you can get, uh, you know, your your action figure that has everything sealed, and then you're also gonna get an extra poker chip as well. So, you don't have to open it up to get the poker chip out to put the rest of them. So, you're gonna get an extra poker chip. And yeah, then that's I, the big draw for those poker chips is putting them in a stack and playing with them. You know. Well, some people do. No, I'm serious. No, I'm being serious. Yeah, uh, that's I know, what I, I like know, doing. Like, like Fraga, like sometimes when he's online, he just he just plays with it in his hand. He just like flicks it around. Um, so uh, I, I thought that'd be because like I know people want those, and if they're sealed in the package, people might be torn whether or not to open it or not open it. So this way, um, you know, it'll it'll give some people some peace of mind. But again, uh, so so we're gonna be doing a pre-launching for that next week. Um, again, uh, thanks for watching, um, and thanks for everyone coming in and hanging out. Uh, and um, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for coming by.